you know, it, it's, it's the reason Jesus could speak the truth. And he says it right here. He says, one who, one who, one who is trying to support himself will always do whatever it takes to support himself, even lie. Even lie. Even lie and do deceitful things. But one who's coming as a, as a, as a voice for someone else, there's no need to, to, to lie. And, and so what I would say to you in this, and again, this is not where we're going this morning, uh, but just for your knowledge, anytime it becomes about you, you will always do whatever it takes to make it stay about you. Did y'all get that? I- anytime you are, your, your, your purposes are about you, then you'll do whatever. And that's why evil can get so evil, is that people will do whatever it takes to maintain whatever they're trying to keep. And so when you don't have to do that, when you say, no, well, hey, God told me to say this. I don't have to support anything else. Just God told me. You don't have to like me. You don't have to love me. You don't have to do any of those things. It allows you, it frees us up to tell the truth. All right? That's, that's just an add-on this morning. You get that for free. All right? The rest of this you got to pay for. Are the lights a little dimmer this morning? Can you turn those up over there, please? I feel like, I feel like y'all don't want me to see your faces. Oh, yeah, you all are out there. Wow, looky there. All right, good. Then that, that, that brightens up the place, doesn't it? Literally. All right, so, so Moses gave you the law, but none of you obey it. In fact, you are, talk, you are trying to kill me. The crowd replied, you're demon-possessed. Who's trying to kill you? And Jesus replied, I did one miracle on the Sabbath, and you were amazed. But you work on the Sabbath too, then you obey Moses' law of circumcision. Actually, this tradition of circumcision began with the patriarchs long before the law of Moses. For if the correct time for circumcising your son falls on the Sabbath, you go ahead and do it so as not to break the law of Moses. So why would you be angry with me for healing a man on the Sabbath? Look beneath the surface so you can judge correctly. All right, listen. Oh, it's going to get better than that. Listen. He says, he says, you have a double standard. Your standard is good for you, but it's not good for others who violate it if they do something other than what you do. And he said this. He said, he said, you still do work on the Sabbath, circumcision yet I do something for someone on the Sabbath I heal a person on the Sabbath and you want to kill me for it and then he says this powerful statement look beneath the surface so that you can judge correctly I say that to us this morning many of us we look at the surface we look at an act and and we go from there to uh, applying a law against them or a ruling against them and overgeneralizing and categorizing them based upon one act. Now think about it just for a minute. Circumcision or healing a person, which one do you think is most important? You see, law will always get in front of the individual. When we live by the law, when we live and make the law, when I say the law, the things that we do, the standards that we keep, then we, it's easy to classify people. It's easy to put them over here or over there and say, well, they're like this or they're like that and never really get to know the individual. So look at this. I'm going to give you about four things to consider this morning relative to this. So... Let's look at a couple of the scriptures. I'm just going to read these out to you. Um, so there's a, there is a law, and, and that law said that every eighth day, uh, the foreskin of the, of the male should be circumcised. And, uh, and then in Matthew chapter 12, verse 2 says, But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. 
These are some references. Uh, John 5.10 says, So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It's the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to take your bed. All of these things are, in, are, are, are impediments to people or to getting close to people or to working with people. See, if we make ourselves a law, we can actually have a way of staying away from the people the law is for. It's easier to deal with letters than it is to deal with people. But it's for people that God has made us. Heard a person say it this way. He said, a person was saying, you know what? I would love ministry if it wasn't for the people. The reply back to that person was, it is for the people that ministry is for. What is ministry if not for people? Another scripture say where the, where the, throw, uh, uh, where the, where the uh, throw is clean or where, the, where there is no oxen, the throw or the, the, the stall is clean. But where there are people, there's a mess. All of the things that are added into our life relative to people are going to be messy. Jesus lived a messy life because his whole life was involved with people. You and I are part of that mess. But I'm glad he's not so shallow as to make his stall so very narrow and so very uh, small that none of us could fit into it. Just think about it. He's allowed anyone who wants to come into the stall to come in with all of our mess. So the law of judging correctly, look at a few principles here or thoughts concerning that. Number one, never ever, write these things down, never take people at face value. You may miss out on a true gift. Never ever take people at face value. Because if you do, you might miss out on a gift, a true gift. If they missed out on Jesus, so can we miss out on on gifts that are smaller than Jesus? They missed out on Jesus. Uh, Jesus was walking in their midst. The power of God was around them and they missed it. How come? Because they were more attached to the law than to people. If we want to live a law-filled life, then we can cut people out all the time. Well, you just lied to me. I'm never going to speak to you again. You didn't treat me right. Well, I'm never going to have anything to do with you again. Do you know how many people you would actually have in your life if, if it was always about what uh, that one act that they've done? We, we would all have nobody around us, would we? We wouldn't even have our children around us, would we? We wouldn't even have our spouses around us anymore, would we? We wouldn't have no one to work with. We'd have to go into business by ourselves because we couldn't work with anyone because everybody has a pocket of mess. There's a statement by John Ortberg. Ortberg, He said this in a book, and the name of the book was, Everybody's Normal Until You Get to Know Them. In other words, everybody has some kind of hang-up except me. No, everyone has. Everyone, everyone. Look around. Look around the room right now and look at the person that you, you've been with or known very little time. They got a hang up. I'm telling you, somebody here has got a hang up. Everybody has one. Everyone, everyone has one. That's why God gives us forgiveness. That's why God gives us the grace to be long-suffering. That's why he plants in our spirit love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and temperance so that we can be in relationship with other people. The Bible says the law killeth, but the spirit gives life. Life for what? Life for relationships. It's the ability to be around people. So Jesus said, you judge by judging surfacing. You don't even know me. 
Because if you really knew me, then you would know who you was before you, and you would want to know more of me. You don't even know me. You're judging me because I don't come the way you want me to come. Listen. Number two, never allow others to determine for you who someone else is. Never allow someone else to determine for you who that other person is. How are you gonna, how are you gonna, how are you going to take their, their uh, editorial or commentary on a book that you yourself have not read in depth, it's yourself. Never ever take someone else's commentary of another person and begin to look at them all square. Like, you know, that happens, man. Sometimes I just feel like, man, why are you looking at me that way? You don't know me. You don't know me, you, you, but yet, yet you're coming off as though and looking at me all sideways and everything, and we've never sat down and had a talk before. Go beyond the surface. Go beyond the surface. In other words, find out more about the person as opposed to, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You don't even know. You can't even make that statement because you don't even know them. If you have reason for that because you've sat down and talked to them and reasoned with them and then you left there saying, mm-hmm, that's something different. I went into a place recently and, and in the front end of the, of the place or the meeting, I knew that there, it felt like, I don't know it, but it felt like there had been some, some prejudgments about me. I mean, it just kind of, you know, kind of, it just kind of felt like there was an uneasiness. Two, two people came in there and one person uh, uh, received a big hug and, and I was about to, I got the big long arm. And, and, and I, I just kind of sensed, and again, I, can't, I can't, can't know this for certain, but I just kind of sensed that there had been some words. One of the words, and, and this, is, this is from someone who told me directly this, uh, one that, and this is in general, and maybe you guys have heard it yourself, hopefully you defended it, um, that the New Day Christian Church uh, is a cult. Now, if you've heard that before, um, uh, uh, anyone ever heard that before? There's some people that have heard it. Well, we're, we're part of the Jesus cult. But the cult means culture, cult, Jesus culture. That's who we are. But a lot of people, I think, make judgments about other people having never met them. Don't know anything about them. Never been around them, never had a sat down and talk to them. So, never ever do what? Never allow others to determine for you who someone else is. They missed Jesus that way. They missed Jesus, the Savior of the world. They missed him that way.